Amen. Well, today and in the coming weeks, we are going to be addressing lies that we all believe. Now, I don't know about you, but when I was a kid, there were some things that my parents told me that I did not realize till I got older that that was such a lie. That's not true. How about this? Like, and you remember the commercial, if you eat your Wheaties, you'll get big muscles, right? I don't think I ever ate Wheaties and I had Popeye muscles pop out. But what about like, oh, if you swallow your gum, that's gonna stay in your stomach forever. It will be in your stomach, right? Oh, if you eat that apple seed, you're gonna have an apple tree grow in your stomach. Like, who even thinks those things? Why do we threaten kids with that, right? Um, If you drink coffee, it will stunt your growth. So you cannot have coffee, children. Well, I know all these little kids in Italy are having espresso at like age 10, right? I never had coffee till I had children myself because I needed it. But there's all these lies. If you cross your eyes, don't cross your eyes, they'll get stuck that way, right? There's a lot of lies that are just fluff, right? They're, we know these things aren't true, but sometimes there's lies that we believe that aren't true at all, and we're gonna expose those over the next few weeks. The primary way that our lives can be destroyed is through the spirit of deception, believing things that just are not true, deceptive ideas that play to disordered desires that are normalized in a fallen society. And so I love Pastor John Mark Comer. Have any of you read his books? Just phenomenal writer, author, pastoral leader. Uh, He's written many great books. He has a wonderful, The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry. If you struggle with slowing and Sabbath, you need to read that book. But his most recent book is entitled Live No Lies. And what he does in this book is expose our three enemies as followers of Christ, which is our flesh, the world, and the devil. But in his book, he said this, and the problem is less that we tell lies, but more that we live them. We let these false narratives about reality into our bodies and they wreak havoc on our souls. And so over the next few weeks, we're gonna wage war on this spirit of deception and deceit. We're gonna expose and defeat it a lot of these lies that we're gonna hit head on that people actually believe here in the Bay Area in this culture. Are you ready? You wanna hear today's first lie? All of you who are watching online, are you ready? The lie is, I'm worthless. I mean, come on, raise your hand if you've all said that. Every person in this room, if you're not raising your hand, you're lying. I'm telling you. We have all had that thought like, my life just sucks. Like, I am no good, I'm not qualified, I can't do this, I'm not capable, I have no purpose. Like, I just feel worthless. Maybe you thought you felt worthless, you feel worthless. I believe right now, more than ever in any time in history, there, is, there are people everywhere who are struggling with knowing who they are with their identity, they feel insecure about who they are. And a lot of that has to do with social media, what we're watching, what we're listening to. I mean, yeah, I'd venture to say a lot of times social media is worse for you than better for you, right? It's not, I always tell everyone I know, only follow people who are growing you and causing you to become more like Jesus. Because otherwise, It can cause a lot of problems in our lives. Television, Hollywood, opinions of others. Our parents are telling us we need to be a certain way. Our peers, our coworkers. There's all these voices who are trying to tell us who we are. And so today what we're gonna do is we're diving into the scripture to see what Jesus has to say about our worth, our value, and who we are. When you're not confident in your identity, it leads you to question your value, your worth. And people don't know who they are, so they're trying to get their value and their worth through how they look, what they sound like, who they're connected to, who they know, how many degrees are behind their name, and nothing's wrong with that. These are good things, but we cannot let those define our worth. We can't think if we can achieve this that, we're gonna be loved more or valued more by God. 
And by the end of this message, I hope today that you realize that your worth and your value is not connected to what you do, but it's connected to who you are as a child of God and whose you are. And what gives us true value is knowing we are in Christ, knowing that we're created by the almighty God, that we are his children. So today we're gonna jump into John, the Gospel of John. How many of you actually brought your real Bible to church? Does anybody do that? We got some around here. All right, come on. It's your sword. If you don't have a Bible, look up on the screen. Check out this verse. It says, for the Father loves the Son and shows them all that he himself is doing. So we see here that the Father God has revealed himself to the Son, that he is the Father he has a son, and he's revealed and showed and invited his son into everything he was doing. We know that we see through the scripture, Jesus says, I'm about my father's business. I know what my father's doing. And when you know who and whose you are, your purpose is gonna be more readily recognized in your life. It's gonna be found, it's gonna be felt. But what I wanna get back to is this thought of that we're looking at today, my life is worthless. <laughs> I just hate that statement. I want you to know your thoughts are not truth. Aren't you, aren't you glad? I think all kind of crazy things that aren't true. I'm so glad my thoughts aren't truth. Your feelings are not facts. Let me just say that. We need to put more faith into the facts about what our Bibles say about who we are rather than how we feel about who we are. We need to train our minds to think on what is true. That's one of my favorite scriptures, Philippians 4, 8. Think on what is true, what is honorable, what is good. So please don't put your faith in your feelings. They will mislead you. They will lie to you. They will tell you things that just aren't true. Let's break this lie down that you are worthless. Who says that? I'm sure your mother doesn't think you're worthless. She carried you for nine months, suffered pain, birthed you, nursed you, fed you, raised you. You ask her if your life's worthless. I guarantee she will not say you are worthless, right? How many new parents do I have out there? You'll amen that, right? What about the rest of your close family and friends? You think they look at your life and say you're worthless? No. Your church family, we believe in you. We wanna see you grow. We wanna see you succeed. We're doing everything we can to, to just help you succeed in life. What about God? He's your biggest cheerleader. He's your biggest champion. He wants you to win. He wants you to flourish. And for you to think your life is worthless, that's like an insult to him. That's gotta grieve him. That's gotta hurt him when you think about yourself in that way. I love this verse in Romans 8. It says, he who did not spare his own son, but he gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? According to God, you're worth his son, his most precious asset, his most expensive thing, you're worth that. He gave that up for you. You know what that means? You're worth it all. He gave it all. Your worth and my worth, we don't determine our value. I can't make my value go up and down. It's God who determines my value. My value, according to God, is invaluable. It's priceless. You can't put a number on it. The Bible says it's immeasurable. There's no height or depth that can measure his love for us. So let's just talk about worth. What, is, what does it mean like if something's worth something? Frank would know this. Frank owns a car dealership. But if you, you buy a car and you drive it off the lot, what do people always tell you? Oh, you're gonna lose value. As soon as you get a new car, you drive it off the lot, it loses its worth, Right? What about something brand new that you open? You take the wrapper off, you throw it in the trash, and most of the time, oh, well, it's already open, so it's lost its worth, unless you return it to Amazon, they take everything back, right? 
It's, it can be opened and all, right? You got a ticket into Disneyland who'd like to go there? You can't use that multiple times. You use it once, you get in, and it's worthless, right? Electronics, your phone, your laptop, as soon as you buy it, the worth starts to go down after you begin to use something. Things depreciate, but your value as a child of God, it never loses value. Put your hand on your heart. I want you to know that today. You are incapable of making yourself any less valuable to God. He sees you perfect. You are invaluable. The Bible says in Jeremiah that God, yes, he's loved us with an everlasting love. There's no period. It goes on forever. It will go on and on. He loves us. Isaiah says it's pr- we are precious in his sight. That uh, word precious in the dictionary actually means rare. It's priceless. We are his gifts. We are his children. You are valued because of who you are, a child of God. We must remember who we are in Christ. Guys, we can't talk bad to ourselves. We can't think, I'm just not smart enough. I'm stupid. Like, I can't do it. I'm not good. We all say these things about ourselves. You know what you're doing when you say these things about yourself? You're aligning yourself with the devil and what he says about you. These demeaning thoughts, when you agree with them, you know, some of you need to let the devil know who you are. Oh, let me just remind you, devil, (laughs) it's okay to get a little attitude, a little sway in your step, a little confidence when it comes to who you are in Christ, right? You need to declare it out loud. I am God's special possession. I am chosen. I am the king's kid and not just King Charles. I am the almighty, the king of the world's kid. I mean, can you guys, does your mind, can your, our minds really can't intellectually process. We are the king of the world's kids. That means we have a great inheritance. I'm a citizen of heaven. I'm God's workmanship. I'm God's temple. I'm the apple of his eye. I'm God's special treasure. I am valuable. What if we woke up every day and thought that way? I guarantee you, you would live your life different if you woke up every day and I'm the king's kid. Oh, yes, I am. I got favor on my life. If you got air in your lungs, if you got blood in your body, you're a child of God. Come on, somebody. There's a new song that sings that. On your best day, you're a child of God. And on your worst day, you're a child of God. Let's take just a moment, something we like to do at our church. We hit pause while we're processing everything that we're hearing, and we call it our Selah moments, which means pause. We're gonna take two minutes and I want you just to turn to someone nearby you. Share with them what moment in your life have you felt the most valuable? You gotta think about this one. Go ahead, two minutes.
About 30 more seconds. Well, thank you for taking a moment to share with someone nearby you. Um, I had to think back on that on my own as well. When did I feel most valuable, right? But we are all valued. We are all special. I, some of you may be aware, some of you may not, but the month of September is actually suicide, National Suicide Awareness Month. And so last week, we have prayer rooms that we run here downstairs on Tuesdays, every Tuesday, 1 o'clock to 3 o'clock. If you want to come and pray on your lunch break, you can join us. But last week, we actually prayed for people across the bay who are contemplating ending their lives. Very serious. And um, we prevailed in prayer. We stood in the gap for these people But last week, um, I was looking up statistics, and statistics show that every day, every day, 123 people in this country take their life. Over 100 people a day. I read that, and I just cried. Because these people feel so worthless, like there's nothing worth living for that they take their life. A hundred people. We need to continue to pray against that spirit of oppression and depression that's robbing. The Bible says the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy, and he's doing it. So let's continue to pray. Suicide, the second leading cause of death between people aged 25 to 35. And then what was shocking as I read The second largest group is 10 to 14-year-olds. 10 to 14-year-olds whose lives have not even began. Consider their life isn't worth living. So many people searching for purpose, for meaning, for affirmation, for love, searching for it oftentimes in all the wrong places. They want to know that they matter but most of us will only receive that true connection, that true realization, that true validation in our hearts that we are loved, that we have purpose, that we matter when we connect with the creator, the one who created us. And one of the few pros of the pandemic, I hate to even say a pro, right, in the pandemic was that it caused us to all stop and look inward, and consider, and ask ourselves, why am I here? What is this life all about? What is my purpose? Where am I headed? Like, these big questions of life. And Jesus, Jesus knew who he was. He knew his purpose. And so, if you were to ask yourself that question, who am I? Maybe you might say, I am what I have. Well, that's great. Maybe you have a great job, you have great health, you have a great home, you have a great family, you have great relationships, you have financial security. But what happens if that's taken away? What if something happens? Unless it's not there, could you still say, I am what I have? Well, that doesn't work. Maybe some of you think, well, I am who other people say I am. That's how I see myself. Well, that's good if they're saying nice things about you, if they believe great things about you, but what if they're not? What if people don't think you're great? Are you just gonna like live your life walking around in your own identity based on what other people think about you? That's no way to live. You gonna stop getting complimented and just feel forgotten and nobody cares about me? That doesn't work. I need to tell you guys, if you haven't discovered this truth yet, this truth will set you free. It set me free. The most important thing about you is who you are in Christ 
And the most important thing about you is what God has to say and think about you, not anybody else. I came to that realization. I lived my life trying to like get everyone's affirmation. I wanted everyone to like me. And I was looking for love in all the wrong places except God and void of God. And it, I wasn't set free till I thought, oh my gosh, he's the only one I need. Like everyone's great. We wanna have great people in our lives, but if he's the only one I need to please God, who we are and that we're loved by God, but also while we're here, why we're here. Jesus knew what he came to do. He knew what he was born to do. We have a good friend of ours here in the Bay Area, a businessman, and um, you ask him what he does for work, and he says, well, I'm doing what I was made to do, not what I was paid to do. Like, he knows, like, I was put here on the earth to do this, right? And I like that confidence. Mark Twain, you've maybe heard this quote before, says, your greatest day is when you are born, but the second great greatest day is when you figure out why. So our identity that we walk in should inform our purpose. The who should inform the what. So when you naturally know who you are as a child of God, you're gonna walk in that purpose. It's just gonna be effortless. You're just gonna have the authority. You're gonna know, you're gonna hear when you abide in Christ what he's calling you to do. And Jesus lived his life with purpose. John 10, 10. I've come to give life and life more abundantly. That was his purpose, was come give us life. So for you to say your life is worthless, Jesus did not pay it all on the cross for you to say my life is worthless. No, 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 no. He paid it all. He gave it all so that you could have an abundant life. If you wanna know how valuable you are, you just look at the cross. He gave it all. I love this Luke 19, 10, for the son of man came to seek and save the lost. That was Jesus's purpose. And I was thinking about this. I kind of got a little revelation on this is because a week ago, I lost my house key, like legit. We have to go in and out of my garage every day and it's driving me insane because I lost the key to the front door. I have looked everywhere, everywhere like turned over every couch cushion, looked under every dresser, cannot find it. And I had this thought that you only search for things that are lost, that have value. I need my house key. It's driving me nuts that I can't get in. It's valuable to me. Now, if I were to lose my paper clip right here, I could care less. It's not valuable. Jesus came to seek and save the lost, you, those here and there because they're valuable, valuable. For this son, uh, purpose, the Son of God was manifested to destroy the works of the devil. Jesus came to destroy hate, judgment, racism, all the evilness in this world, abuse, pride, arrogance, sickness, greed, betrayal. Jesus came to destroy it. Aren't you glad he came? Bible goes on, we know that scripture, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Jesus came to set, oppress those who are free, those who are bound. We're always gonna question our worth if we don't know our purpose. And so knowing whose you are and who you are isn't enough. We need to do our purpose in this life. Your who must inform your do as well. Doing your purpose is gonna help you trust in the value and who you are and your worth. Look at this. If we don't do our purpose, we will forget who we are. Listen to this verse, James 1. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like a man who looks intently at his natural face in a mirror. For he looks at himself and goes away and forgets what he was like. But the one who looks perfectly into the law, the law of liberty, isn't that a great word, perseveres, being no hearer who forgets, but a doer who acts, and he will be blessed in his doing. Okay, 
So it's like we all look in the mirror every day. Most of us, if you don't have a mirror, well, God bless you, how you get around. But we all usually make sure we don't have like seeds in our teeth or food in our teeth, okay? We look in the mirror. Nowadays, it's our phone, right? You open the camera app and you're like looking at yourself, right? Who needs a mirror when you got your camera app or your phone? Jesus says, and how many of you know that? Like looking in our phone, it's so superficial and it can lie to us too, right? Jesus says we need to look into the word, into the law of liberty. When we dive into God's word and read about who we are, man, that's good stuff. If you aren't reading the Bible, you are missing out. I'm just telling you. I went years being a Christian not reading my Bible. I didn't know how. That's why we equip people here who are hungry to read the word. We have a Bible study every day on Zoom in the morning. We read it together. And his word is a treasure chest. God spoke that to me last week. My word is a treasure chest. Get in there. Read about who he says you are. Get some Proverbs, some wisdom for every day. But we must do who we are, this says, in order to become who we are. And so I'm gonna wrap up in a moment. Don't, just a few minutes, worship team. But something crazy happened. And you never know, like, things that happen in your life that God's gonna use in a message. But this, I never knew this. This is kind of like good and bad because I'm able to share it today. But something wild happened. A week ago, I get our mail out of the mailbox and I get a letter and it's addressed to my husband, Mark. And I open it and it says it's the Navy Federal Credit Union. And it says, thank you for opening account at our Navy Federal Credit Union and for transferring this deposit into this account. And I thought, did Mark open a bank account at the Navy Federal Credit Union? That's weird. And so I go to him and he's like, no, that's not me. So after a couple hours of investigation and calling up this credit union, someone has taken Mark's social security number and opened up a bank account in his name, which is serious stuff. If you don't know, we had to call the police department. We had to call the IRS and report that Mark's identity has been stolen. Like, no, that, no one should ever, and the waste of time, it's crazy. It's been a hassle to fight. Now we have to like check our credit report and monitor that no one's opening more stuff. And, but seriously, ticked off last week about this because someone's trying to steal his identity or whatever. Some of you have allowed the devil himself to steamroll you telling you who you are. It dawned on me. I'm thinking, oh, Lord, Jesus, we can have our identity stolen too. Devil's telling you you're worthless. You're no good. You're not good enough. You're not qualified. You know what? Usually these negative thoughts, if they oppose the scripture that you're hearing, if the devil's telling you stuff like that, it's because usually the opposite is truth. God's about ready to use you in a powerful way and he's trying to threaten you and intimidate you so you will cower back and not believe in yourself. So just know that. Remember, when you start to hear these conflicting thoughts that are negative, usually, man, you better, God's getting ready to do something good in your life and the devil isn't happy about it. Here at EXP, We want to help people know their purpose. Everyone that starts serving on our teams here, we have them take something we call the real you, and it's the most amazing spiritual gift assessment. There's all kind of assessments out there, you know, Myers-Briggs, Strength Finders, but the real you is gospel-centered, and it helps people know, like, how God has wired them, what gifts he's given them, so that they can use those not only to serve the church, but also their neighborhood, their workplace, And it's amazing. It's important we understand how we're made, who we're made by, and what God wants to use us for. We all have something to give, each and every one of us. Doesn't matter your age, if you're retired, if you're a new mom, if you're working, if you're not working, we all have something to give. So don't let the devil steal your identity in Christ. Some of you, I wrote down, you need to pull a yellow flag. Are y'all watching football or not? I don't know. 
I'm ready for some football today, later today. Bears, Packers, we're watching. You need, I mean, when the devil starts to come in your life, talking negative, you need to pull that yellow flag. I had to ask around today if there's a red flag in football, but I guess there's a red card in soccer. You get ejected. Some of y'all need to eject the devil. Come on, kick him out. Get him out. Close those accounts that have been compromised. Close these accounts. Shut them down. Get rid of all the voices. When God, you know, when the devil tells you you're worthless, no, I'm not. I'm valuable. I'm the king's kid. I'm used by God. Tell him. Tell him how important you are. Band, you can come on up. I love this, and this is how God works. In a moment, we're gonna sing this song, Who You Say I Am. I didn't tell them to play this song today, but the Holy Spirit must have, huh? And we're gonna worship together. But maybe you're here today, and maybe you just kind of don't feel real confident in your purpose or maybe where you're headed or why you're here. You've heard mentioned a couple times already today. In October, we're starting the Alpha course. I want every one of you here. It's for everybody. Alpha is for the skeptic. It's for the agnostic. It's for the atheist. It's not church. We're not gonna pray. We're not gonna worship. We're gonna watch a film. We're having a live DJ on launch night. We're gonna dance, we're gonna have drinks, and we're gonna have fun, but we're gonna also look at the question, is there really more to life than this? And so I want you to be here, Tuesday, October 4th, if you know someone that lives in the Bay Area who's questioning faith, who's questioning why they're here, questioning their existence, what is my purpose? Feeling maybe worthless. Maybe they just need someone, a safe space to like wrestle with some questions or have someone listen to them or love them. Don't just invite them, bring them. Come with them, sit with them. Alpha's a great place for that. And so we'll be launching October 4th, but if we could all just stand, I just wanna pray over us. We were gonna show you a video on Alpha, but we'll save that for next week. You can come see us, come see me right after this worship experience. There's a bright red table. If you want more information on Alpha, I'd be happy to talk to you about that. But I just wanna pray this over you. Just put your hand on your heart. Lord, we just thank you for loving us so much. I just pray, Jesus, that you would quicken us to remember who we are. That we, you said, are royal. We're a chosen people. We're special. We're valuable. We are worth everything to you. And God, we just pray that you'd come into any inadequacies in our hearts and our minds. God, help us to be confident. We thank you that you qualify the unqualified, that you call capable those who feel incapable. God, help us to know that our lives are precious, that our lives are a gift. And God, we just pray that you would affirm us in your love, Lord, each day that when we wake up, that we would know that we're deeply loved. And God, send us out to encourage others who maybe feel lost, who feel just confused about who they are. God, would you use us to shed light and to bring life into their lives? We pray that you do this in Jesus' name. Amen. Restore our identities. Amen and amen.